I don't want people to take money out of the bank where it's safe and then invest it into one hour and them not be set up for success. And it is about following the system. You're purchasing an expensive GPS system, one hour. When it's telling you go left, don't go right. Follow the system. And so I'll let people know. Entrepreneurial spirit is important, but there's a difference between being a true entrepreneur and a franchisee. Like you've paid for the system, take advantage of that, that this is again about building a team. Welcome to the Franchise Founders Podcast. We are on a mission to help aspiring entrepreneurs just like you take action through franchise ownership, allowing you to obtain more financial freedom, time with family, and ultimately a business that can run on its own without you. Good afternoon, everyone listening into the Franchise Founders Podcast or morning or evening, depending on what time you're listening. Stan Claps, your co-host of the Franchise Founders Podcast with Christian Dadalik on. What's going on, Christian? Not much, man. Same as always. Just excited to have a couple of really awesome guests on today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Me as well. We've got Michael Hutchins and Chad Harrison on today. Really excited about this episode. You know, we've got one hour heating and air with Authority Brands. And, you know, if you know anything about Authority Brands, it's an incredible company. What they've done is they've created a platform for many different home service businesses, one hour heating and air being one of them. And we're really excited to get to learn about this brand and maybe a little bit touch on Authority Brands overall. So, Who's going to start off? If you listened before, you guys know we never do the bio. You got to do your own bio. So who's starting, Chad or Michael? Chad, why don't you go first, buddy, and introduce yourself? Well, Christian, Dan, I appreciate you giving us the opportunity to be on here. And thank you so much. Um, Michael and I are very excited to be part of the group. So I actually have a different background than franchising. I was actually a restaurant management, hospitality for 15 years. And of course, as COVID came and went or continued to stay, I pivoted out of the business. There really wasn't a forecast for sales. So it, it was challenging for sure. Some improvement lately, but I've been out for now a year and a half. And so I stepped into the franchising world and what a surprise. The industry is huge. You know, from one hour heating and air, the space, essential services, home services. And so I got the opportunity to start up with Mike in about a year and a half now and just really loving the business. You've got the professional the business side, the financials, then you've got the actual operational side. It's just a big world and I love being a part of it. Fantastic. Well, let's turn it over to Michael. Michael, tell us how you got into franchising and your background. I fell into franchising by accident. I was recruited by one of my customers who was in franchising and I had sold the trade show display to him way back more than 20 years ago. And I fell in love with the industry. And I've, you know, been an individual producer and someone who's recruited, trained and, you know, led multiple, you know, high performing franchise development teams. I've had responsibility at one time for 10 brands in two different countries. But I love working with entrepreneurs. And, you know, I take great pride in helping people kind of take that step, getting into business for themselves. And it's nice to be able to see, kind of put your finger on these businesses that are peppered around the country that you had a small part in helping establish, you know, creating jobs and legacies, you know, for our clients. And like Chad said, I I echo that. It's exciting. It's fast paced. And, you know, I found the vehicle for me in franchising over 20 years ago, and I'm still just as excited about it today as I was back then. I love that. It's really incredible. I think sometimes we can take it for granted after a while, if you've been in the industry a long time, especially much longer than I have, like you have, Michael. And the ripple effect that you can have throughout the economy and throughout the United States in terms of the job creation, the lives that are changed from a consumer standpoint, it's a win-win for everybody. So franchising really is absolutely fantastic. So that was very well put. So I think what we can talk about now is obviously we'll get into the brand and how awesome the brand is. And we can talk about the industry. But even before that, I think what's so nice and something that most people look for, something that we look for is a key differentiator, what sets people apart. And the brand obviously has key differentiators as well. But I think one of those big differentiators is the fact that you all have authority brands 
backing you as well. So tell us, what is Authority Brands? Why is that special? Chad, do you want to start with that? Then maybe, Michael, you can take over from there. Yeah, absolutely. So the company started around 2017 and our focus is home services. And what we have, Krishna, is just we have a 1.6 billion dollar company that has the momentum and the excitement as well as Michael and I do to back these franchises, to expand them, to get, like we were saying before, to get new business owners, change their life and get them into an area, whatever that area may be, that didn't have that franchisee owner, didn't have those jobs created and start that up. So, you know, we've got a great executive class behind us, the support, and it's just a very strong, robust company. Well put, Chad. And like, there's so many synergies. Authority Brands, we're celebrating our five-year anniversary this week. And this whole machine is designed around owning the home inside and out. So, you know, we cross market, which is a benefit for all of our owners. It helps them ramp up that much more quickly. If we have a sister brand in a market and I'm opening a new one hour, the same homeowner is the same customer. Likewise, I open up a one hour and I have owners that have layered on, you know, other brands within the authority brands, you know, under the authority brands umbrella. And there's just natural synergies, you know, with marketing and, In some case, like, you know, our purchasing group, all those things just make it easier for our franchisees to scale their businesses, not only just by adding additional territory to their first brand, which they can obviously grow by adding additional territories, but layering on other authority brand franchises within that same territory. So it's just great for our franchisees. Makes sense. And for those in our audience that may not know, authority brands... Do you own the different franchises in the space? And if so, what kind of advantage is there in doing that? Yes, we absolutely own the rights to franchise. We own these companies, but a lot of our brands, in addition to franchising, we also have corporate owned stores, which is terrific because it allows us to try different things out that may seem like operationally like would be a good idea, but you know, when the rubber meets the road, it might be a little difficult to implement. So That gives us a chance to really kind of test these ideas, make sure that they're going to add value to our franchisees and not just be an additional cost or burden to them. And it's also a great training platform. I have one-hour owners, brand new. The majority of the folks that I work with are entrepreneurs. They're not from this industry, but they like that it's an essential service, the high return on investment relatively short ramp up period and in setting them up for success everything you know that we put together for them when it comes time you know for ramping up they can take technicians the owners themselves can go and spend time ride alongs for techs you know be in the office at our corporate stores and just learning the system and expediting and abbreviating that learning curve and it just allows them to get to that break even point and being able to reinvest back in their business that much more quickly. So the combination is just terrific. And you touched on this a little bit as well, but it'd be nice to do a deeper dive too, because we've had a lot of people on, I mean, home services, especially during the pandemic seem to have fared very well. And so we've had a lot of home services franchisors on, but what's the case for home services? I think a lot of people initially, they're kind of maybe look at it like we always say on this podcast and we always talk about it, I'm sure in the industry, it's not the sexiest, type of opportunity, but it might be the greatest opportunity that you never thought of. So, I mean, what's the case you could make? Absolutely. Like I said, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs. A lot of our new franchisees came to us through one of the various broker networks. And they're exploring basically several concepts that may fit kind of their investment range or whatever it may be. And exactly what you said, you know, HVAC might not be at the top of their list. Like they're looking for something that might be a little bit more sexy if you want to use that term. But once they're introduced to us and they learn about our item 19, I mean, last year, our number one location did over 22 million. System wide with now pushing 400 locations, average revenue for a one hour was 3.8 million. So that's attractive. And then when they hear that you know they're not going to be pioneers with one hour. I've got a NASCAR pilot, someone in med school, engineers, IT, finance, attorneys, 
all of these individuals are running successful HVAC locations. They're never going to work in the truck. Most of them could care less how much refrigerant goes in a machine, but they make available all the resources to their team in order to grow. And the key attributes for success, it's not, you know, you know how to turn a wrench, but what it is is that you follow the system. One hour's case, it's been successfully replicated hundreds of times across the country. And this business is about building a team. You can start with two vans and two technicians, add on a third you know, van, a third technician in a relatively short amount of time. We turn up the marketing machine. They're servicing more customers each day, increasing revenue, and they just keep repeating that process. The one hour in my hometown, he started off with two vehicles and himself. He's now up to 177 employees, 60 some odd trucks, adding team members, adding territory. And he's the largest contractor now in the panhandle of Florida, tracking to do $35 million this year. That's unbelievable. So that's the model. That's the path. That's attractive to people. You know, that is attractive to people. You know, they're running a big business. And their vehicle is the HVAC industry to get there. Certainly. I mean, that's definitely life-changing, no doubt about that. I mean, that's really like empire building stuff. Absolutely. I have a technician. He was in Florida. Now he's up in New Jersey. This gentleman did not have a lot of money, but he was very good at building a team. He's now up to three territories following the system. Three territories. He's tracking to do $10 million this year. So again, it's following the system and building a team. And if you adhere to that, you're on the pathway to success. Fantastic. Well, Chad, something we can touch on too is I think a lot of people, they think HVAC, and I think a lot of them are probably immediately thinking, gosh, I mean, it seems like there's probably a lot of people within my market that do that. I'm sure, you know, some pushback you guys might get from time to time is maybe the feeling of saturation. So what do you typically say to people that feel that way? Yeah, great question. I mean, so you're going to start off with the 20 plus years that we have in the business. You know, they've developed the marketing that works. They know the ROI on that marketing. They've developed the operations, the training, and just very confident. And our CEO says this often that put this brand in any market space and he's confident to gain market share. And it's just... With the operations, the seasoned operations and the veterans that we have in our group, it just stands out and creates that solid brand. We're going to make the phones ring, you know, essentially bring those leads in. And then you have the collaboration with our other franchisees, our current business owners, as Michael was saying, some of them with 15, 20 plus years and the revenue is incredible they're making. And these gentlemen, the collaboration, they want to work with our new franchisees coming in and then develop that system and have that collaboration where they can utilize their expertise. So I'm very confident in that arena for sure. Well, and I'd like to add to that, that, you know, our marketing team is terrific. We've got our internal marketing team with a toolbox, television ads, radio spots, Any type of print or digital marketing that you can think of is in there. In addition, because we are the market leader, we partner with Scorpion. So our franchisees are also assigned a Scorpion consultant. Like Chad said, we're going to make the phone ring. We are going to build fences around their customers once they're engaged. And this is really, I think, one of the most important things when you talk about competition. It doesn't matter if you have 40, 50 contractors in your territory already. Not everyone's going to be on the first page when someone does a search and no one is going to scroll down multiple pages looking for their HVAC contractor. We are going to ensure that they're going to be on the first page near the top of their list in their respective territory. And then we teach them how to sell the one hour system with all the added values. You know, we get more than our fair share of business, no matter what the competition is, because no one really can offer the success academy that we have. We have a 2% warranty recall rate as a brand with all these locations and jobs that we perform. So one hour is doing the job right the first time. It leads to so many positive Google reviews that, you know, I, our marketing team and our owners really don't view other contractors as competition. No doubt. And I think something that a lot of people forget as well, I think we know this 
on the consumer side of things, but a lot of companies within home services, it's oftentimes just a chuck in a truck. They're unreliable. They don't answer the phones. They're smoking on the job, showing up late. Their marketing isn't dialed in, you know, so it's very easy to kind of stand out from a lot of those people that aren't investing a lot into marketing that are unreliable. They have not so great reviews. So I think that that's definitely a, an avenue that uh, allows people to compete in the home services space as well. Absolutely. You're absolutely correct. I had this one question. So we got lots of brands that get on here, lots of candidates listening. And maybe you might have to think about this for a second. I don't know, but if you had to pick the one main thing that stands out about the brand for our candidates? What would you say it is? And on the back of that, who's your perfect candidate to fit you? Sure. Well, I kind of alluded to this already. What I look for, you know, when someone is interested in one hour and I want to set them up for success. And so, you know, if someone doesn't, for example, have the proper communication skills, this may not be the opportunity for them if they want to be the owner operator. You know, it's just going to be additional struggles where they may be better suited for that. I don't want people to take money out of the bank where it's safe and then invest it into one hour and them not be set up for success. And, you know, it is about following the system. You're purchasing an expensive GPS system, one hour. When it's telling you go left, don't go right, follow the system. And so I'll let people know I'm, you know, entrepreneurial spirit is important, but there's a difference between being a true entrepreneur and a franchisee. Like you've paid for the system, take advantage of that, that this is again about building a team. Now, if you're not the person who's going to be able to create that culture, get people aligned towards the same common goal, you may want to bring on, you know, a manager, someone that can do that for you because it's going to benefit you because without that, you're not going to be able to add to your team, retain who you have, and grow your business, which you need for one hour. So those are really the key attributes. So I make sure that people have those or they're going to hire those attributes. And then, obviously, you need to have the financial strength, et cetera, to do that. But those are really what separates. And I would not approve someone who I thought was going to be at a disadvantage if they weren't going to bring in management to kind of take up that role of being the face of the business. If you're enjoying this episode, please click the subscribe button. And make sure to connect with the Franchise Founders Podcast on LinkedIn. So then on that same note, we know what the ideal franchisee might look like, the attributes that they have, which I think is more important than anything. They have to have the right skills, the attributes. They don't need to be from the industry. That's typical of most franchising for the most part. But let's also talk about what does the day-to-day look like? So we talked about building and leading teams, but when they first get in in the morning to when they leave the office or whatever at night, I mean, what does that day-to-day operation look like in terms of the owner's involvement and responsibility? Sure. If they're the owner operator, so now they've gone through onboarding and we flip the switch and the phone is ringing, they are going to act as their own dispatcher. So they're going to be there answering the phone, using the computer, and then setting up the appointments for their technicians. They're also going to be working with our internal franchise business consultants who work with them on every aspect of the business, really ensuring that they're on track to meet and exceed the established goals for their location. So they're going to be in contact with them. They're also going to be going over their daily management reports with their franchise business consultants, understanding what that data means so that they can effectively manage their team, manage their resources for their business. And, you know, we're going to guide them and keep them on track so that they're successful. And then once a week, they should host a weekly team meeting. Again, this is about building a team. So pick a day and maybe it's, you know, before everyone's first appointment, they come in, you know, you may have a contest, whoever has the most service contracts this week, or whoever helps me recruit my next technician, you know, you get a gift card, simple things like that, but keeping people engaged, especially earning early on, you know, what you've learned from your franchise business consultants, industry-wide, brand-wide, et cetera, sharing that information with the team. And again, making sure that everyone is engaged and aligned. And that's really going to be kind of your typical day as an owner-operator. Love it. Love it. Yeah. And I think you touched on briefly a little bit earlier about some of the employee structure. I mean, you talked about some people that have these massive businesses with a ton of employees 
And I'm sure for some people that might sound intimidating, but you did also mention that when things first start out, it's you don't have 100 plus people that are working for you. Can you tell me what those roles are again? Sure. So you can start with owner operator and two technicians, one for each vehicle. You want to have two vehicles to launch because when those are fully utilized, that's going to generate the revenue that's going to allow you to reinvest and get the third vehicle, third technician. So you can start off with three employees initially. And if you need to get the manager, then you would have four. You know, you'd have the owner. And then you'd have your manager and your two technicians. And then as you grow your business, you're going to eventually have an admin. Someone else is going to answer the phones and things like that. You're going to have varying degrees of different technicians, some that are dedicated maintenance, some that are dedicated service repair, some that are dedicated installation replacement. You'll also add salespeople, people like myself, that all they can do is turn the thermostat from hot to cold. But, you know, they're comfortable giving customers the good, better, best, like sitting with the iPad tablet and going through a bid, following up. Did you have any questions? You'll add runners that are going to take equipment to the next homeowner so that your techs can be more efficient. So you're going to grow your team and they'll have more specialized roles. But initially, two technicians, you know, is more than sufficient to launch and then Within your first year, you're going to be going through your second phase of hiring and adding on additional staff. Makes sense. Makes sense. So, Chad, also, something I like about the model is there are different revenue streams. I mean, it seems like if you're going to replace an HVAC system, that can be a relatively high ticket job size. But there's also recurring revenue through maintenance program, I believe. So what can you tell me about that? You know, because it's nice to have the best of both worlds. You have a nice high job size you can have on one hand, but then you could also have the benefit of some recurring revenue on the other. Yeah, it's what we call the comfort club. And, you know, Michael can give you some great examples of some of our franchisees are doing currently, in some cases, up to 12,000 to 15,000 members. And it's a strong recurring revenue, as you said. And again, it gets you inside that the customer's home consistently, developing that relationship as a franchisee, as the one hour. And anything to add, Michael? Yeah, that's a great question. There's three revenue streams for one hour. So, you know, service and repair, installations and replacements. And then the recurring revenue component, which are service contracts, which we call Comfort Club. It's pretty simple. You know, a franchisee's customers send in a monthly subscription. And then in return, they get two service maintenance calls a year, priority placement if they have to book an appointment, 15% off any large repair replacement. And as Chad had said, you know, this is great for franchisees. You know, you've got that revenue coming in every month, but it's also great for your customers. You're helping to ensure that your customers' homes are maintained properly. And at one hour, we do extremely well with our Comfort Club program. We have a 33 point something percent initial subscription rate and 85% of our Comfort Club members renew on an annual basis. And revenue-wise, it's extremely strong. As Chad said, you know, I've got 14, 15,000 homeowners in a respective territory all across the country sending in monthly subscriptions and a million dollars or a little more than a million of our owners' total revenue is attributed back to the Comfort Club. (laughs) That's unbelievable. One of the big reasons I like recurring revenue too is something that I like to talk to people about is starting with the end in mind. You know, obviously we want them to be a franchisee for a long time, make a lot of money along the way. But at some point, maybe they're retiring, maybe illness comes or whatever the case is. But I think it is important to consider what's my exit strategy someday. And there is absolutely a ton of value in having recurring revenue as part of the business. Absolutely. So one thing I want to talk about, just a couple more things before we wrap up here. But obviously, you know, the writing on the wall is... and. I don't pretend to be some economic prognosticator or anything like that, but there's a lot of talk. Inflation is high, interest rates are going up, and there's this looming recession. How intense it's going to be, I don't pretend to know. But a model like this is highly recession resistant. So I was hoping we could talk about that a little bit and why that is, how that is. And, you know, without asking you to make any kind of predictions, but I mean, why do you think this is the right kind of business for where we're at in the market cycle? Well, 
I've been in franchising for, you know, well over 20 years. I've been in the hospitality industry, a variety of different industries, and now home services for quite some time. Some, you know, the pandemic recession proof was a big key thing. Now people are like, well, it's pandemic proof. You know, our owners, just the industry wide, our owners are up 25% compared to an industry average of 16%. This is the last five year same store growth. You know, so we're outperforming the industry by nine points. Then you look at one hour, last couple of years, our owners are up over 30% year over year. I mean, we're adding territories, we're adding staff, we're growing. We're still able to, because of our purchasing power, get vehicles, equipment, parts, tools to satisfy that increased customer demand. People are home. They're focused on things, you know, in all home services. They're just in their homes more, taking care of things that may have been on the back burner. So you see a big uptick in really home services overall. Your home is your sanctuary. It's going to be one of the last things that you kind of just let fall by the wayside. You know, you can give up getting a new car give up going to Disney World this year, but you're not going to let your family go without heat and air conditioning in the summers and winters. You know, and I'm not celebrating that other industries didn't really fare as well. That's just the reality of home services. It is what it is when you come down to that. I think with the conversations I'm having, I deal with the front end of the conversation and then Michael will finish the remaining of the discovery process with our clients. You know, I'm talking to a lot of individuals. And like you said before, Christian, where we're in the home, we see the work being done and they see the advantage of the business first and being at home, but then also being an essential service. I see a lot pivoting. They're looking to have, like, as you mentioned, that recurring revenue, that steady stream. And that's the conversation I'm having a lot, pivoting out of one other business to, to an essential service like HVAC or just diversifying their portfolio. Well, and also Chad's introduced me to a few people. I can tell you some people, and it's more than a few now, they don't want to have their futures kind of mandated by their employer. They've done well. They've got a nest egg. They've got, you know, children that are going to be, you know, heading off to college soon. And they want to have control of their own destiny. And so they're looking for an opportunity where not only can they kind of give themselves that financial security, but also they're young enough where this is going to allow them to really kind of create a legacy for their families in some cases, if they want to grow it that large. So I see a lot of people kind of transitioning out of corporate America and, you know, wanting to go into business for themselves. We have several candidates that kind of fit that mold right now. No doubt. Yeah, it's time to sweep some of those gains off the table and invest into ourselves, right? That's right. Makes a lot of sense, guys. Well, I appreciate you both for coming on. I think this was some incredible insight into authority brands, an awesome brand with a tremendous amount of potential. I mean, the track record speaks for itself, obviously. So any parting words of advice for people that are considering franchise ownership or anything you'd like to leave us with? Any imparting wisdom at all? Chad, I'll let you start and then we'll wrap it up with Michael. Yeah, and I'm sure Michael will give you a little bit of contact information, but you will reach out. I mean, it's a strong industry, strong business, and we've got a great group behind us operationally. And, you know, be excited to definitely work with you. And anyone who's interested in learning more about One Hour, you know, please reach out to Christian directly, and then he will, you know, make an introduction. That's probably going to be the easiest path for you. But I would suggest if you're looking at, franchise concepts, look at several and keep an open mind. I can't tell you how many people have a one hour now and they're so thankful that they just listened, invested, you know, a half an hour of their time learning something, you know, about an industry that they weren't that familiar with. So there's lots of great concepts out there, you know, beyond one hour, beyond authority brands, look at a few and kind of understand that. Also, talk to other owners within that system. I think it's important to get a perspective on the day in the life of whatever brand you're looking at and get their perspective as an owner. You know, truly, what does a day in the life entail from their perspective? And I think that's going to be great insight to anyone that's considering 
a franchise concept, going into business for themselves. So I would definitely emphasize to do that during your discovery process. And I wish everyone the best, you know, who's looking to go into business for themselves. It's exciting. It can be a little intimidating. It's a big step to kind of go from signing the backs of checks to the front of checks, but lots of people have done it before you. Franchises are really a much safer way, a much more secure way to go into business for yourselves because the system is there and you have all of the support. And for really a nominal royalty, you're just gaining expertise in everything that you would need to know to run that business successfully. And again, I wish everyone the best of luck as they pursue you know, their dreams, if that's business ownership for themselves. And Christian, thank you for inviting Chad and I on today. It was a pleasure. And we'd be happy to come back another time as well. Absolutely. We'd be happy to hear about updates as time progresses and time passes by. But really appreciate the sage advice, great wisdom for the franchisees and potential franchisees in the audience that are looking at business ownership. And thanks for giving us a real deep insight into one hour heating and air and the support that Authority Brands provides. So thanks everyone for hopping on to another episode of the Franchise Founders Podcast. If you haven't already, leave us a five-star review. If you liked what you heard today, give us a share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Franchise Founders Podcast. If you want our help with anything from buying a franchise to franchising your business, to anything in between, shoot us an email at franchisefounders at gmail.com. 